So, like I was saying, lesson two is all about function rules. Yesterday, we talked about function tables. In the very middle of the table was our function rule. Okay, those were those expressions, x plus 2, 4x, 3x plus 5, okay? That's what we're going to be working with today is the actual function rule. So, right here in the vocabulary startup, it talks about a sequence. So a sequence is a list of numbers in a specific order, okay? It just means a list of numbers. So like one, two, three, four, five, okay? That's a sequence because it's going by the ones. Two, four, six, eight, 10, five, 10, 15, 20, 10, 20, 30. Those are all sequences, okay? Now each number in a sequence is called a term. All right, so we're going to be talking about terms a lot today. So that's why you, you just got to know that in a sequence, the number is referred to as a term. I'm going to be saying it a lot. So arithmetic sequences, okay, those are found by adding the same number over and over again. So when you see arithmetic sequence, it's when you're adding or subtracting. They go hand in hand. Geometric sequence is when you're multiplying or dividing. So you're multiplying or dividing with geometric. So, and the arithmetic sequence. What can we say about this one, Cole? Adding the same number to the previous term. Exactly. Adding the same number to the previous term. So this is when you're adding or subtracting. So that would be like two, four, six, eight. What are you doing each time there, Cole? Just adding two each time. So we're adding two each time there. That's what arithmetic means when you add. What was geometric? What's geometric sequence, Cole? So you're multiplying the same number to each term. So geometric means you're multiplying the same number to the previous term. So an example could be uh, 3, 6, 12, 24, because you're multiplying, because you're multiplying by 2 each time. So that's what a geometric looks like, right? So that's what we're going to be working with from, first, from the beginning. We're going to be working with sequences. So down in the real world link. The China Palace sells lunch specials for $6 with a delivery charge of $5 per order. Fill in the table with the next three numbers in the sequence. So we're going from 11 to 17, 17 to 23, 23 to 29. What's the next one, fifth one going to be? 35. How did you find that? So how'd you know to add six? It just says um, six right there. Well, not just because of that, because it also says five. See? Uh, exactly. Each time we're going up by six. So the sequence is we're adding six to each one. So now we're at 35. What's the next one going to be, Cole? 41. 41. And the last one? 47. Okay, so that's all. That's how sequences work. You're either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. That's it. So once you have all that, go ahead and go on to the next page. All right, so arithmetic and geometric sequences. So basically, you're just finding a pattern. You guys have been doing patterns in math for years. 
Okay, that's all sequences are, is just finding the pattern that they're doing over and over and over again. All right, so number one says describe the relationship between the terms in the arithmetic sequence. So what are we doing? Adding. adding or subtracting. So they give us this, 7, 14, 21, 28. What are we doing each time? We're adding 7. We're adding seven. So that's how you describe it. Okay, you describe the relationship by saying you added 7. Okay, you can put it like that. We're talking. You can use symbols or words. So added 7 to each one. Now they want us to find the next three terms. So if we're at 28 and we're adding 7 each time, what's the next one going to be, Austin? 35. What would the next one be, Cole? 42. 42. And what's the last one going to be, Layla? 49. And that's your answer right there. Okay, you add 7 to each one, so the next three terms would be 35, 42, 49. That's how you answer these. You described it and found the next three terms. Zach, you should be paying attention. So number two, now we're talking about a geometric sequence. So what are we doing? We're dividing or multiplying. Multiplying or dividing. So we go 2, 4, 8, 16. What are we doing here, Austin? Multiplying each of these by 2. So symbols, we put multiply by 2. That's how we describe it. Now we have to find the next three terms. So, Zach, what's the next one? 32. 32. What's the next one, Cole? 64. 64. And the last one? 128. So that's how you answer these. You describe it by putting what they're doing, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, the number and then find the next three or however many they ask you to find majority of the time it's just going to be the next three terms that's it so once you have that go to page 591 591 we're going to do number three so it says, describe the relationship between the terms in the sequence 6, 18, 54, 162, then write the next three terms in the sequence. So first we have to figure out what they're doing. How are we going from 6, 18, 54 to 162? Multiplying it by 3. So that's how we describe it. We multiplied it by 3. Now we have to put the next three terms, which means... All we're doing is multiplying the previous term by 3. So 162 times 3. So 3 times 2? 6. 3 times 6? 18. 3 times 1? 3. Plus 1. So the next term would be 486. So now we just continue on doing what? Multiplying it by 3. So now we do 486 by 3. So 6 times 3? 18. 3 times 8? Plus 1. 4 times 3? Plus 2. So the next term would be 1,458. So to find the last term, what do we have to do? Multiply it, multiply it again by 3. So we just take this last number and multiply it by 3 again. So 8 times 3? 5 times 3? Plus 2. Is it 5? Yeah, it should be 5. So 4 times 3? Plus 1. And 3 times 1 plus 1. So 4,374. Okay, so with that one, with multiplication, sometimes it does get rather large. So all you're doing is multiplying it out. Yes. What do you mean? No, they won't always tell you if it's arithmetic or geometric. You have to decide for yourself. That's why they... You, they 
started with that, and then they're going to slowly put you into it, just finding out your own way. So let's go back to page 588, and I want you guys to do A, B, C, D. So you're describing it, find what they're doing each time, then you have to find the next three terms for each one. So you're either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. That's it. So figure out what they're doing and go from there. So you got a little bit of time. So go ahead and start. So letter A, okay, we have 0, 15, 30, 45. What are we doing each time here, Cole? So 0 times 2 is what? 0, so that doesn't work there. Peyton? Adding 15. So if you look, 15 plus 0 is 15. 15 plus 15 is 30. So you're adding 15 each time here. So we add 15. Now we have to find the next three terms. So that means we have to add 15 to 45, which is what? 60. Okay, then we add 15 to 60. 75. And then we add 15 to 75. 90. So that's letter A. So we are adding 15 each time. You just have to add them. Okay, letter B. So we have four and a half, four, three and a half, three. What are we doing here, Zach? Exactly. We're subtracting now. We're subtracting by that uh, five tenths, 0.5. So then we just subtract. What's 3 minus 5 tenths? 0. 0.5. 2.5. So what would be the next one? Peyton? 2. And the next one? 1 and a half. Okay, so that one was subtraction. Letter C. 1, 3, 9, 27. What are we doing here, Austin? Multiplying by what? We're multiplying by 3. Because if you look, 1 to 3, 3 to 9, 9 to 27, each of those is being multiplied by 3. So that means we have to multiply 27 by 3. Did anybody get that one? Zach? You multiply 27 by 3 is 81. 81. Okay, then 81 times 3 would be what, Cole? 243. And then we take 243 times 3. Kyla, what'd you get? 729. So that time was just multiplying it by 3. Okay, letter D. 3, 6, 12, 24. What are we doing here? Camden? Oh, he's looking at D. Oh, D. We're looking at letter D. So what are you doing for letter D? I multiply by two. Multiplying it by two. Okay, so each one of these is multiplied by two. So now we do 24 times two, Austin, 48. And then we take 48 times two, Dalton, 96. And then 96 times two, Stevie? 180. Uh, should be 192, sorry. Should be 192. Okay, so that's all you have to do for sequences, guys. You're finding out either multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtracting. You just got to find the pattern. Okay, so like this one, if they start at zero, more, majority of the time, it's not going to be multiplication. Because zero times anything is zero. So it's going to have to be addition, subtraction. Okay, any questions on this? All right. On the next page, now we're going to start working with functions and the rules, finding the rules. So basically, when you're finding a sequence, okay, you're finding a rule, a function rule for that pattern. Okay, We're going to turn that into using it for our function tables. Okay, So what you're going to do is we're going to look at position 1 and try to figure out how we got from 1 to 8. 2 to 16, 3 to 24, 4 to 20, or 32. What did they do there to get from 1 to or two, 1 to 8, 2 to 16? What did they do? They added uh, 7. So 1 plus 7 is 8. 2 plus 7 would be 9. 
So what do they do, Kylie? No. Oh. Not add by two, Simon. They uh, added eight. Oh. They're not adding. Guys, how do they get from one to eight? Two to sixteen. Three to twenty-four. Oh. No. Zach? Multiply. Multiplied by what? Eight. Multiplying it by eight, guys. So eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. Eight times three, 24. That's what we're looking at. So now that we have a table, okay, they're going to start talking about this n. That means n term. Okay, what that means is that any number that you're looking for, any term, you can plug into n. That's why we have to find the function rule. So to do that, we look at how we got from 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 3 to 9, 4 to 12. How did they get from 1 to 3 and so on and so on, Austin? So 1 plus 3 would be... Oh, think about that again, Peyton. Multiplying it by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So to describe this, you would put times 3... Now, the second part is we have to put our function rule. So what that means is, since we know that we're multiplying it by 3, all right, we're going to multiply n by 3. So we're going to put 3n. So that is your function rule, all right? Jacob, we are up here. Okay, the next one, the next part of this is finding whatever term they're asking you to. So that would be the 10th term here. So what you do is replace n with whatever number they're asking you. So 10. So what's 3 times 10? There's your answer. So you got to describe it. You got to put the rule. You got to put your answer right there. All part of that. So let's go back to page 591 again. We're going to do 1 and 2. So once again, it says use words and symbols to describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Then find the value of the 12th term. So this first one, we go from 3 to 12, 4 to 13, 5 to 14, 6 to 15. How are we getting from here to 12, Austin? Not adding one. So you're doing, I think what you're doing is looking like this. What I'm, what you need to look at is from how we get from three to twelve. There you go. Well, yes, that one's multiplying by twelve. But how? But then you got to continue the pattern from four to three. Hold on, you're jumping the gun. Zach, sit down. Okay, how? Do, so we're in the position. Okay, this is where we start. So we, our number is three. What do we have to do to three to get to twelve? Four to thirteen. 5 to 14, 6 to 15. What do we have to do each time? Dalton? Four. No. Cole? Um, six. Okay, how, so what are we doing with the 6? Guys, you're just saying numbers. Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? Kylie? Adding by 9. Adding by 9 because, look, 3 plus 9 is 12. 4 plus 9 is 13. 5 plus 9 is 14. You have to start with this number and get to this. What did we do? We added 9. Okay, so each time you're adding 9. So the next part is you have to write your rule. So that involves the end. So if we're adding 9, how would that look? Cole? Uh, 9n. Oh, that's multiplication. How would you write it if we're talking about adding 9? Simon? N plus 9. Okay, so then since we're trying to find the 12th term, you put 12 in for N and just add it up. What's 12 plus 9? Oh? Uh, 12 plus 9 is uh, 9. I think you're multiplying. 100, sorry. No. Kylie? No. 12 plus 9. Stevie? 21. 21. Okay, so guys, your first step is to figure out how we go from this number 
to the second one. It's always the top to the bottom. How do we get from here to there? So in this case, it was adding nine. So the next one, we're going from two to 24, three to 36, four to 48, five to 60. What are we doing each time, Peyton? Multiplying each of these by 12. Okay, so we have our, we know what we're doing. Now we have to write this as a rule, like this. So how would that look, Kylie? 12n. Okay, so now we have our rule. We have to find the 12th term, which means we just replace n with 12. So we do 12 times 12. Everybody know that one? Austin? 144. So that's all you have to do for these. Figure out the sequence like we did before, write it as a rule, and then solve it for whatever term they're asking you to do. So let's go back to page 589, and I want you guys to do E and F. So just like we finished there. So E and F. So, it says, use words and symbols to describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Then find the value of the eighth term. So this first one here, we go from 2 to 12, 3 to 18, 4 to 24, 5 to 30. What is our seek? What are we doing here? What's the rule, Simon? Uh, multiplying each of these by 6. Okay, so if, if we're multiplying each of these by 6, what's the rule going to look like, Dalton? Oh, n times 6. So how would we write this? Peyton, 6n. Okay, since it's the 8th term, we replace n with 8, and we just multiply. So what's 6 times 8? 48. So there it is right there. Described it, your rule, your an the answer to the 8th term. Okay, the next one, we go from 3 to 7, 4 to 8, 5 to 9, 6 to 10. What did we do here? Peyton? I think it should just, there it is. Add 4. Okay, so you're adding 4 to these. So your function rule would look like what? What would the rule look like? Cole? 4 plus n. Well, let's start with n. n plus 4. Okay. Usually start with the variable. No, you're fine. That, I mean, technically speaking, that is correct, too. I just normally, they always just start with N. I don't know why, but they do. Okay, so then since it's the eighth term, we replace N with 8. So 8 plus 4 is 12. That's it, guys. Okay, so you're finding the pattern and going from there. Okay, your homework today is a little bit of a review of solving equations as well. So it's kind of like what, a little bit of what we did yesterday, a little bit today, and working with equations. Remember, you always do the opposite of what's there. So 6Z9 is your homework.